Well, hello there. Welcome. I am Mona Hilton. I'm the CEO of Genesis Global Technologies and the authors of Advantage Anywhere. And I am so honored that you've carved time out of your day today to join me to talk about how to grow and manage your PACE programs. Thank you so much for coming today. I'm really excited to get to know you. Um, we are in Southwest Florida, pretty much paradise, and it's hot here today. So I'm not sure where you're at, but if it's cold, we welcome you to come visit us. It's beautiful here. So what? Uh, if you want to take your PACE programs to the next level, I truly believe you're at the right place today. So again, welcome. Now I also know that your being here means that you're taking time away from your PACE responsibilities. And I want to say thank you. It really does mean a lot to me. And I believe and I hope that your investment of time today is going to be worth your while and prove to be of value to you. After all, you know and I know that you give so much of yourself to the participants of your PACE programs. I like to say you're all heart. And you are probably also all in to the mission of PACE. You know, PACE is so great because you serve the people who are most vulnerable and can't reciprocate. Now, I have a personal connection to you, and I'm going to share a little bit about that a little later on. But I do know that you have huge hearts, and that's probably what drew you to the mission. And I'll tell you, that's what drew me to you. You know, we, you, know we don't, you don't have the kind of job where you get to go home at the end of the day and forget about everything. Just the opposite. It's probably really personal to you, and who knows? It's probably sometimes, truth be told, very consuming because you can't get away from it. Now, I have had the honor and the privilege of speaking to PACE directors from across the nation um, over the last few months, and the ones I've spoken to, their hearts are really big, but unfortunately, sometimes the resources are mm, not so big. Oftentimes, you have to make do. You have to find a way to get a lot done with very little resources. So you might find yourself spending a lot of your day juggling things like your priorities and your tasks and your communications and all the people and a to-do list that really has no end to it. So have you ever wondered why some organizations look like this and some other ones look like that? What's the difference, do you think? Do you think one has an easier market or more talented people or better resources? Do you think that they possess intelligence or abilities or innate gifts that the other ones don't have? Or are they just plain lucky? Well, that's what we want to explore today. And in full disclosure, I want to tell you right up front that we offer a system to help PACE programs put in place and automate all the things we're going to talk about today. So we help PACE programs turn their disorganized mess on the left into um, very well-engineered structures and machines that you see on the right. And at the end of this session, I'm going to show you a little bit about what we, our system, and offer you a free executive coaching session with me and a free video as my thank you for attending today. So everything's on the table. There's no surprises. I'm in full disclosure. So let me ask you, what does your day look like? Does it feel kind of like this some days? I call this frantic busyness. You have tons on your plate. You have lots of balls in the air unmerciful demands on your time and a wish list that you really do mean to get to but you know what life gets in the way and day after day goes by and all of a sudden one night you wake up in the middle of the night with what I call an oh shoot moment oh, oh shoot was I supposed to call Mrs. Jones back or oh shoot did we drop the ball on an enrollment process or did I tell so-and-so about my conversation with Mr. Smith if you've had them, it's okay, you're in good company. We've all had them. If this sounds familiar, as I mentioned, I've spoken to so many PACE directors across the country, and they've shared these very challenges with me. Things like, there aren't enough hours in the day. You know, there's many days that I leave at the end of the day feeling like I didn't accomplish what I set out to do. 
Or maybe they tell me, you know what, we have systems, but they're on paper. And even if you have systems, they're manual. They rely on memory or maybe a paper checklist or they're worse yet, they're dependent on a person to make sure that they get done. They also tell me that there's no way to see what's really going on. They're using spreadsheets for tracking and for information. And they tell me our spreadsheets are unreliable. They're time consuming and they're outdated pretty much the second that we finish creating them. And here's my favorite. I use sticky notes all over my desk to remind me of what's important. Sorry, when they said that, this is exactly what I envisioned, so I couldn't resist using this graphic. <laughs> so can you relate? Does this sound like something that is familiar to you? Hopefully, you're not the one who told me those things, but you might have been. I'd like to share a few quick eye-opening stats that are either going to make you feel a lot better about your life or they might make you say, ouch. So let's take a look. Tell me what you think. The first one is that 67% of managers cite follow-through as their number one business failure. Not patient care, not customer service, but follow-through. And on average, every morning, the, per the normal person spends 30 minutes trying to get organized, figuring out where they left off the night before, what they need to do for the day. 30 minutes every day, five days a week. And then, you know those people who contact you from your website? There's a, what they call lead, speed to lead statistic that says if you contact your web leads within five minutes of them reaching out to you, you're a hundred times, not ten times, a hundred times more likely to reach them and engage them than if you wait just 30 minutes. That almost sounds impossible, doesn't it? And then the last one is that the people who reach out to you, of those who reach out to you, 80% of them will never get any kind of follow-up. And it's not because you don't want to. It's because life gets in the way. That's why we have a uh, saying that says um, that you should follow through. We like to say until they buy, cry, or get a restraining order, whichever comes first. And we're sort of joking, pretty much. <laughs> So, you know what, about now you might be wondering, okay, so who is this Mona person and what makes her qualified to share on this topic? So this might be a really good time for you to get to know me a little bit more and for me to tell you about my why, why I do what I do. Well, as you know, my name is Mona Hilton. I'm the CEO of Genesis Global Technologies and we are the authors of Advantage Anywhere. But I'm not just a business owner, I'm also a wife, I'm a mom to these two precious kids, and I'm a daughter, and this is my family picture. That's my mom on the right. This is a picture of my mom. Her name is Margaret. She is 89 years old, or I should say young. She lives at home. She drives a car despite our protests, and she absolutely refuses to give up her independence. So on a beautiful, sunny October day in Florida many years ago, I was out shopping for clothes with my husband. You see, we were planning the trip of a lifetime the next month. My dad, my mom, my husband, and I were going on a trip to visit my homeland, Egypt. So my husband was born in Southern California. Yes, he was kind of a blonde-haired surfer dude. But he'd always dreamed of going to the mysterious land of Egypt. So, of course, he married me. That <laughs> made sense. And it was finally going to happen. But on that beautiful day, October 12, 1991, we came home from the shopping trip to the answer machine. Yeah, we had answer machines back there, the little machines you could call and leave a message on them. Um, the answer machine light was blinking like crazy, and my heart sunk. I knew something was wrong. Turns out my parents were traveling home from North Carolina with another couple, and the driver of the Suburban fell asleep at the wheel. He rolled the SUV several times, and everyone had died, including my parents' dog, all except for my mother. When we got there, she was barely alive, and she wasn't expected to make it. She was airlifted to Jacksonville Trauma Unit, with everything broken, 
her head was split wide open, internal bleeding, but she was alive. Now, I lost my dad that day, and sorry, I promised myself I wasn't going to get emotional. That's a picture of my mom and dad on their wedding day in Cairo, Egypt. I'm not going to tell you when because then you'll be able to figure out how old I am. But um, my mom was alive. Granted, I lost my dad, but I still had my mom. And it took really many, many months before she could even function, basic function again. Today, she's 89, and she still carries many of the scars and the effects from the accident. She has limited mobility. She can't see out of one of her eyes. But I'll tell you what, she's tough. She insists on living at home. And it's people just like you who've been there to help make that possible. You guys have treated her with dignity and tenderness. Sorry. And for that, I'm personally forever grateful. I always promised myself that one day I'd find a way to pay it forward to the people who've been so kind to my mom and treated her with such tenderness. So fast forward. It's June 1994. I started a technology company. And since 2010, we've been helping senior living and senior care providers make their jobs just a little easier and their lives a little less stressful. We do that by organizing their data and creating processes for them, what we call tracks to run on, so we can systemize their follow-up and their follow-through and their communications, and we can consolidate all their tools, their sales and their marketing, their tracking, their communications, all in one, on, under one umbrella. And for the past nine years, We've asked literally hundreds, maybe thousands of people, what are the challenges you're facing? And if you could change anything, what would you want to change? So we've collected a lot of those. And I think we can group them into three real general areas, which I'd like to share with you. The first challenge is getting efficient, getting organized and consolidating disjointed tools. We call that Outlook spreadsheets and sticky notes, oh my. Having all those tools that are disjointed, they're expensive, they're inefficient, they generate um, errors and manual errors and reporting difficulties. The second major challenge is developing systems and processes. But the key is automating those. We call that, again, following the yellow brick road. Because when processes are manual, they get dropped. They just don't happen. People mean well, but life gets in the way. So creating tracks to run on is what makes this work and then automating it. And then the third huge challenge is tracking and managing information and then being able to report on it. You can't make good decisions if you don't have good information to base it on or if the information is old or it's been fudged or for whatever reason isn't reliable. So those are three big challenges. And you know what? Today as a society, generally speaking, we are busier than we've ever been before. We're ever running behind. Stress levels are the highest I've ever seen them in 25 years. Now, I could springboard off of that. I could go off on a tangent about all the distractions that we have these days and the unrealistic expectations we put on ourselves and other people and all the technology disruptions. And really, the truth is, we sum it all up by this quote, the enemy of productivity is busyness. My point is, I believe it's time to stop the madness long enough to reassess, reevaluate, how are we doing things and why are we been doing them the same way for all these years and is it time to come up with a better, maybe a less stressful way to run and grow our programs? That's why I just love this cartoon because it really punctuates the sheer futility of being so busy that we miss the obvious game changers, which that of course leads to enormous amounts of stress and frustration and burnout that we're seeing today. Not to mention those middle of the night, oh shoot moments that we talked about earlier. Now I'll tell you what, it would be really easy and rightfully so for me to make the argument 
to that the solution to all of our challenges that we're facing that I'm talking about is just to create better systems, you know, systems that will make your life easier. And I would be right to say that. The answer isn't having systems. That is on the surface, the answer is to having systems. I've actually been known to say this, you can only duplicate your success when you can replicate your process. And I believe that with all of my heart. However, as absolutely vital as systems are, in practical application, there's more than that that makes systems work. And we're going to circle back into that and kind of dive into that in a moment. But right now, I'm ready to have a little fun. How about you? Let's, um, let's play a game, just for grins and giggles. Um, you guys up for a game? You ready to have a minute of fun or two? It'll be fun, I promise. <laughs> So let me tell you about the game. I'm about to show you a slide. And on this slide are the numbers 1 through 100 all over it. They appear to be in random order. Once I show you this slide, I'm going to give you 30 seconds on the clock. And I want you to find with your finger the number 1, and then find the number 2, and then find the number 3, and so forth, all the way up to you get to 100. OK? You ready? All right, here's the slide. And here goes the counter. Go. 30 seconds. Find one and two. Point to them with your finger. 20 seconds left. No pressure, but half your time is over. <laughs> 10 seconds. Five, four, three, Two, one. Okay, oh, hey, stop. Fingers off the screen. <laughs> All right. So how'd you do? Anybody like to chat with me and tell me a little what your score was? What did you get to? Anybody get to 100? If you got to 100, definitely chat with me. I have a prize for you. You have to be honest, though. What about 75? Anybody get to 75? So let's talk about your feelings. How are you feeling right now? Are you a little flustered? Maybe you're frustrated? Maybe you're a little angry with me that I didn't give you enough time. <laughs> Fair enough. I agree. Now, I want to try this exercise again, but this time I'm going to let you in on a system. This system is pretty cool. I'm going to show you the same set of numbers again. But this time I'm going to show you how it works. Now they're divided up, the whole slide is divided up into four quadrants. And when you find the one, like up here in the top left-hand corner, you're going to find that the two is in the same position in the next quadrant. Ugh, quadrant. And the three is in the same position, and the four. And then when you find the five, you're going to know where the six and the seven and the eight is. So you got it? We're going to do 30 seconds again. Here we go. Ready? Go. Twenty seconds. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, stop. All right. How'd you do this time? How far did you get? Now I can tell you that when I do this live and in person, most people double their first score. And they're a lot more relaxed. They actually smile at the end. They're happy with me. They're not typically mad at me, unless they're so angry from the time before. But how about you? How'd you do? Let me know. Send me a chat. Give me some feedback. The point that I want to make with this exercise is just to demonstrate how much easier and faster and less stressful it is to do a project when you have a system and you know how to use a system. But I know, I know who I'm talking to, and I know I'm preaching to the choir. Now, over the years, I can tell you that we have observed that there are a few foundational things that you have to get right in senior care organizations. And if you get them right, you're going to be successful, you're going to be efficient, and you're going to have high morale in your programs and your offices. Today I'd like to address the three main pillars that are necessary to making PACE programs effective, successful, 
and stress-free. And with your permission, I'd also like to weave in some demonstrations of how we can set you up to have an advantage in this crazy, busy, chaotic world that we live in. Now, we call the system Advantage Anywhere, and we especially designed it based on the input and feedback and the wishes of PACE directors and senior care professionals. So you'll never have to struggle with these challenges or waste precious time or burn out brain cells dealing with frustrating inefficiencies and all those other challenges that we talked about earlier. So as a nod to my homeland, or homage, if you will, to the story on Egypt, I'm going to use Egyptian pillar, pillars to demonstrate. You guys okay with that? They're beautiful. Anyway, I'm not at all biased. So the first pillar that I want to talk about today is getting organized and maximizing your efficiency. And part of that is consolidating your information and your tools. So what does that look like? Now, if your world looks a bit disorganized, chaotic, and you spend more time than you're willing to admit publicly searching for information, searching your hard drive, or scouring through your outlook for an email, or chasing people down to update a spreadsheet, you should know that it doesn't have to be that way. Getting organized means that you have all your vital information available to the right people at their fingertips whenever they need it. And a big step towards maximizing your efficiency is to be able to consolidate or combine or integrate your systems and tools and functions in one single place so you're not wasting valuable money hours, as I call them, moving data around, jumping from software to software, or chasing people down to ask them for information or tell them something that they need to know. By the way, we have a term that you'll hear me use called sneaker net, which means you're using your sneakers to run all over the place. Also, by consolidating, you're saving big bucks. And not just because you're not spending money on all these multiple tools that don't talk to each other or a tool that does one little teeny thing that you need, but also you're saving time, which translates into man hours, which translates into dollars, which could be much better used on more important things that you could be doing. Now, remember that stat that I showed you earlier that the average person spends 30 minutes every morning trying to figure out where they left off and what they need to do today? What would you accomplish if you had those 30 minutes back? Hello, Pat. This is Abby. How can I assist you? Now, what you just heard is Abby. She is the world's first voice-activated assistant, and I'm going to tell you more about why you're going to love her in a second. But what you're looking at here is this personal performance dashboard that we created for you that automatically lays out everything on your plate for the day. You log in, everything's there, your appointments, your emails, your tasks, your top PACE referral contacts, your uh, PACE program participants, everything. You might even call this Command Central. And to save you even more time, everything you see here is clickable, including the graphs. So you can just click on one of them and get to the information or the contacts, contacts or the lists or the tasks in a single click. Now, you heard Abby talking to me in the background. As I mentioned, she is the world's first talking assistant. One of the big challenges that we heard over and over again, people complained about, was that they didn't have the time to go back in and put in their notes and type them all. So we created Abby because she will listen to you so you can give her instructions, and I'm going to show you something here in a moment. But more impressive, Abby will actually dictate your notes as you speak them. Abby is awesome. She's my favorite assistant. Now, I'd like to uh, show you a quick clip. It's a few months old. It's a little older. But I want to show you a clip that I recorded a while ago to show you kind of watch me interact with Abby. You'll watch me talk to her, and you'll see how she works. Here we go. Hello. Hello, Pat. This is Abby. How can I assist you? Go to tasks. 
Thank you for website inquiry. Finished and send. Go to calendar. Find Robert Redford. Searching for Robert Redford. Here you go. Notes activity. Read notes to me. Notes. Free procedure appointment scheduled for Robert. He does not like to be called Bob and he collects autographed baseball. Next note. Prospect discovery guide. Save. Next note. Robert inquired from the website about our Acme services. Follow-up automation has been started for him. How did you hear about us? MG11000. Stop notes. New note activity. Record note. Had a great conversation with Robert. Period. Save. What would you like to do next for Robert Redford? I'm done. Okay, I stopped. Um, I stopped the video. It goes on for another couple of minutes, but you get the idea. So, did you notice that I said uh, I said a name of an email, and Abby opened it up, and I said finished and send, and it actually sent it for me, um, and I could dictate my notes. One of the things that we have found is that when people dictate their notes versus typing them, they put a lot more detail in there. And that's detail for that's helpful later when you want to search for it or you want to look up information. So Abby is the coolest thing ever. Not only do you get better quality notes and all of those kinds of things, but one of the other things that we found is that people love using Abby. So they're more likely to use the system and they use it more frequently because it's fun. It's a novelty. It's kind of like having a game. So um, I appreciate you uh, indulging me and let me show you a little bit about Abby. But let's go on to our second pillar, which is, as you can see here, creating systems and planning processes and touch campaigns and then automating the whole thing. Now, it's a good thing to create systems, but it's a significantly better thing to automate them. Why? Well, because systems and checklists on paper doesn't guarantee that they're going to be followed. There's too many things that can interrupt the process. So when I talk about automating, what I mean is they're happen they happen consistently. Day in, day out, rain or shine, they're not dependent on a person to remember. They don't require you burn up any brain cells or involve any oh shoot moments or heaven forbid, need a sticky note to remind you. An example of follow-up automation uh, might be a totally hands-free, automated email nurture campaign for maybe a referral source who is browsing the internet, finds your website, and wants to download content from your website. These are what we call nurture campaigns, and they're perfect for engaging staying in touch and communicating with your PACE referral sources and keeping them, you know, in the loop or um, engaged with you. This is how you can uh, guarantee that you're going to satisfy that speed to lead statistic that we talked about earlier that says you need to engage your web inquiries within five minutes because this does it for you. Even if it's 2 o'clock in the morning or early uh, some, on a Saturday or something that you can't be around, this will take care of that for you. But what about if it's not just uh, an entire list of emails? What if it's a workflow? Like maybe, for example, an, an enrollment process. What if you wanted to automate that? Well, you can automate your workflows, things that you want to make sure that the follow-through, the steps happen every time consistently, nothing falls through the cracks. This is an example of what your PACE enrollment process, what we call a task matic might look like. And once you are actually engaged with a potential participant and you want to uh, continue to work with them, but you don't want it completely automated, you want to direct it, uh, there's a follow-up assistant. It literally hands you, kind of on a silver platter, the resources from a library 
things that you can use like follow-up emails and templates and actions and suggestions so you can pick the one that's most relevant for that potential participant at the moment but you'll never have to search Outlook a word to find something that you've used before and then repurpose it. Here's what an active follow-up assistant looks like on Betty White's face page, if you will. Talk about saving time and stress. You can look here and see exactly that it's on track, what's queued up. You can pick something different. Um, there's no way Betty can fall through the cracks. And the real genius here is that you create those steps only once, and then they just happen. That's why we call them task -matics. It's a cheesy play on words. I'm going to set it and forget it, but I promise you'll never forget it. <laughs> So all these things happen automatically for you. And having automated systems ensures that, ensures that you're not reinventing the wheel for each situation. So for example, what do you do now when someone downloads content from your website? Do your people, does it come in by email? Do your people rethink what should I send them, what should I do? Maybe um, scratch your head wondering what should we send next? Are you hoping and praying that people know and will actually follow the processes? Well, this eliminates that whole thing, because now it's easy and foolproof, or what we call bulletproof, to follow that yellow brick road and do the things that you know are going to lead to success every time. So you're eliminating the manual work and the stress because everyone knows exactly what to do next. Now, the third pillar is the real game changer, and that is having the ability and the power to manage, to monitor, to make decisions and pivot with confidence on a dime. Sorry, this is what you're looking at here is the web engagement automation, what that looks like, the whole process. Totally automated. And here's the third pillar. As I mentioned, it's the power and ability to manage, monitor, and make decisions and pivot with confidence on a dime. So, you know, we talk and joke about spreadsheets a lot, but what if you really could kiss your time consuming, mind numbing spreadsheets goodbye? And what if you, instead, you could trade those spreadsheets in for interactive dashboards that you could actually click on or drill down into the details and the actual people that making up that data. These dashboards I'm showing you, they never have to be updated because they're real time every time you click on it. I actually joke and take pleasure in saying that there were no spreadsheets hurt in the making of these dashboards. I know, it's silly mom humor. Well, and what if, Say you need to send one or two or three of these reports, take your pick, monthly to your CEO, or maybe you need to send a report to your state association every month. How would you like it if your system automatically created that report for you and emailed it to whomever you identified on whatever date you picked? Live, real-time information in their inbox. How much time and mental real estate would that save you? All right, so just to recap the three PACE pillars, performance, one is to organize your information, consolidate your tools, eliminate redundancy and, of course, clutter, creating systems and processes and automating them, and managing, monitoring, and reporting in real time with minimum friction. So you might be thinking, all right, Mona, are you trying to tell me that we need a CRM? Maybe we should just get a CRM, or you know what? We have a CRM. Honestly, truthfully, I wish CRMs were the answer, and I wish they solved it, because if they were, we would not have spent the last nine years and, oh, at least a couple million dollars uh, creating a solution to fill in all those gaps. But CRMs are fundamentally flawed, and they fail, and especially in pace and senior living. Um, what I'd like to do is show you a clip that better illustrates my point. Okay, I'm working. All right, fine. How are you were saying? He's needy. Every day, it's what did you do? Who did you talk to? Who did you email? And CRM. Doc, this is a partnership. I can't provide my 360 degree view if she doesn't share her daily activities. It's about being transparent. Who's that? Somebody. 
Who's Jordan now? He's a prospect. We're talking. Why do not know about it? We're talking. If CRM don't know about it, it don't exist. Fine. Then he doesn't exist. See, Doc? That's what I'm talking about. Disrespectful. Don't appreciate organization. Doc, I'm great at selling. She at the top. But I need some space so I can do it my way. Your way? Pen and post and notes? My system worked. Spreadsheets? Yeah, and privacy. The CRM don't know about it. Then it don't exist. I sound like that? Yes. Yeah. I'm only with you because I'm forced to be. <laughs> I love that. Isn't that true? And here's the irony of the whole thing is that that video was put out by a company that worked with you to try to make your CRM fit. So that's especially funny coming from them. But it's very honest, too, in that CRMs don't work. CRMs are like electronic Rolodexes. You can look up contact information, but not a whole lot more. Some people describe them as rearview mirrors. They can tell you what happened yesterday. That is, if you put the information in there, unlike this lady, but they can't help you with what you should do next. And nobody likes, as you heard, or uses their CRM. And even if you do have one, I'll bet my bottom dollar you still need other tools. You're probably using email marketing, your sticky note reminders, your to-do list, your spreadsheets, and who knows what else. And now we're back to square one. We're disorganized, we're buying and managing more stuff, we're jumping between things, and we have a desk that looks like this poor guy. And add to that the fact that most CRMs are not designed for the way PACE programs work or for outreach marketing. There's also a dirty little secret that nobody talks about, but everybody in the industry knows. And that secret is that 10% of CRM implementations are successful, less than 10%. That means that more than 90% fail. That's documented. So why do you think that is? Well, there are a lot of reasons. We could talk about how the CRMs are not poorly set up. Nobody puts any planning to it. They plug it in and expect it to work. We can talk about how they're not customized properly for the organization, so they're not a good fit. We could talk about how people are not sufficiently trained. They get maybe an hour, if anything, of training. And all of those are contributing factors. But I will tell you that the real reason people don't use their CRM is the same reason that people pay for a gym membership, but they don't go to the gym. They plan to go someday, but there's no pressing reason and there's no accountability. The gym or the CRM will keep taking your money month after month. Trust me, I know. Last summer, I signed up for a gym membership for myself and my son and my daughter, and we were determined. We used it three or four times a week. We were gym rats. But around November, hmm, things kind of slowed down. I'm embarrassed to say that by the time the new year rolled around, we were not really going. And finally, about March, I ended up canceling it because we were no-shows. I'm not proud of it, but it's true. Now, contrast that with the year that I worked with a personal trainer. Yep, this is her. Her name is Peggy Schoolcraft, and she won Miss Universe for bodybuilding. And just in case you're wondering, she is as tough as she looks. Believe me, I know. She trained me for a year, and I was in the best shape of my life. I promise you, I had an hour slot with her twice a week, and I had to be there, and I had to be on the equipment promptly on the hour, and if I ever missed a session, she fined me $50, so guess what I did? Yeah, you guessed it. I showed up. I stuck with the program, and it worked. It worked really well. Having a coach or trainer is a difference between success and failure. I cannot stress enough to you the importance of having a performance coach. It literally determines whether you're going to succeed or whether you're going to end up a statistic, which we don't want. So every PACE director that we work with gets assigned to an executive performance coach that works with them to set up their system and then coaches and consults with them to help them create their goals, their processes, 
and a course automates everything for them. That is our secret. Our secret is our coaches. They work with you weekly or monthly for as long as you need. That's how we guarantee that our PACE clients and all of our clients get to their goals and they get deficient and they get the results that we promise them. So picture this, an office where everything goes smoothly as planned. Imagine that you have systemized your PACE program to the point that everything is in place and people, volunteers, they can come and go but they just plug into your existing system and everything continues working smoothly. Imagine that you've taken the time to develop well thought out systems and processes that are tried and tested and will streamline your day and that your enrollment process and your other workflows are all on tracks so everyone knew what they needed to do without keeping lists or folders or sticky notes or Tylenol on the desk. <laughs> Imagine that everyone who needed the information could access it without chasing you down or disrupting someone's day. And imagine never having to chase people down again. So instead of chasing someone down um, or sending them an email or calling someone on the phone because you need to tell them about something, uh, that you need them to know about a participant or maybe a referral contact or something that they have to know. What if all you had to do was tag them, like you do on Facebook or what we call at mention them in a note like you see here, and you put it on the participant's history. That at mention would actually trigger a notification and send a link to them. So they could see what you wrote, what you documented, all without you spending one extra second. You might never wear out another pair of sneakers doing sneaker net again. You and your team could come in every day. They would know what they need to do. They would know what was on their plate, what calls I need to make. That's Abby. What emails they need to send, what appointments they had for the day. They don't waste 30 minutes every day. That's, what, that's two and a half hours a week that they get back. And when they complete a task or an email or a letter, they don't need to worry about remembering what to do next because your task o matic so set it and forget it processes, will, will remind them or whoever's next on the list of what's due. It'll even queue it up for them if it's an email or a letter template. How cool would that be? Yeah, I'd applaud too. And what if you really honestly could kiss your spreadsheets goodbye? Imagine never again having to create another spreadsheet because all of your information was tracked and your reports were built for you. You could even have them emailed to you on whatever day you chose, hands-free. Does that sound like utopia to you? Well, you might be thinking, uh, that's all great, Mona, but um, it's not realistic. It's not real world. I, I, I can't do all this. How am I supposed to... Uh, pull this off. I've got my hands full now. I don't have the time or the bandwidth and the last thing I need to do is take on another project. I get it. I hear you. I hear it every single day. And the truth is, if you did have the time and the bandwidth and maybe a little extra help, you probably would have already implemented a lot of this already in your PACE program. But the reality is, you have more than you can do now on your plate and the last thing you need is more work or another project. You can't dedicate more time or resources or energy. There's no more time to give. And you don't have the time to strategize the right processes or create the systems or put it all in place. I hear you and my heart is with you. And for starters, I hope that this time together has given you a little bit of break or opportunity or the space, if you will, to step back from the busyness so you could take an objective look at how your program is running now and what could you consolidate or where can you improve efficiency by eliminating redundancy or run around or how can you reduce the manual steps or the manual spreadsheets that make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. You know, how can you free up time so that you can work on what's important? Hopefully, this time was an opportunity for you to think a little bit, whether we work together or not. However, if you do want to take the next step and you really are serious about becoming a well-oiled 
pace organization that makes the most of your existing resources, your people, your time, your money, I've got really good news for you, and that is that we can make this a reality for you. Um, Advantage Anywhere is a system that we have. It's perfectly designed for the PACE and the senior care programs. It is absolutely complete. It's an all-in-one tool. It does everything we discussed and so much more, as you can see here. Um, it will let you organize your life. It'll automate all kinds of different processes. It'll help you to communicate automatically with your referrals, your potential participants, your participants, uh, your vendors, everyone, one at a time, or even in groups and mass emails. Using Advantage Anywhere will definitely free up your time. It'll automate your follow through and your workflows and make you super efficient. And as you saw, it's super simple to use to help you get organized and streamlined and run your PACE program like that well-oiled machine that we keep talking about. And who knows, you might even get a good night's sleep. Now, as I've already mentioned, we've been doing this for nine years in senior care and senior living. So we know the pitfalls, we've seen it all, and we can help you navigate through the best practices that have worked and avoid the ideas that sound good but don't really work in real life. We can customize that whole thing for you. We'll actually take over and do it for you. You will never be on your own. In fact, you'll have an executive coach who will spearhead and do all the work for you. This, by the way, is Kristen Zay. She is the vice president of our consulting operations. She's been doing this with us for nine years. And prior to that, she uh, consulted um, in other industries as well. Um, you'll definitely get to meet her and you'll likely get to work with her. She is brilliant at asking the right questions in different ways to pull the information out of you that she can use to create the system and wrap it around you so it's perfect for you. You'll have to give her some information, but she and your coach will work with the rest of the team to create your processes. They'll do it for you. They'll develop your systems, they'll automate it, they'll tailor the whole system to perfectly meet your needs your vernacular, your processes, your culture, and then when it's all ready, you and your team will get personal live training, and not just for an hour or two, thorough training. And then your coach will actively work with you, mentor you, advise you for as long as, you're, as you need. They will actually become an extension of your team, and they're invested in your interests. Truth is, when you're working with a coach like that, it's almost impossible for you not to succeed. We've seen enormous success this way. The other thing is, it will save you money. It'll save you money in software and added tools and time spent and in a whole lot fewer mistakes made and dropped, you know, balls that don't get dropped because your advantage anywhere the system and your executive coach still costs less than you're probably spending now. You don't even realize that. Um, you'll get more participants in your programs because you'll get through more enrollment processes quicker and more efficiently because it's automated and bulletproof and it moves faster. You'll also find and engage more referrals because you'll systematically uh, engage them and stay in front of them. And you'll do a better job with your outreach programs and your events and your lead capture. I'd venture to bet that once you start using the system and working with your coach, you won't ever know how you live before getting all your ducks in a row. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. But uh, oh, seriously, we have tons of happy senior care testimonials that will back up what I'm saying. You're welcome to talk with them. Almost all of our clients absolutely live and die by the reporting in the dashboards. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but this Advantage Anywhere system that we're talking about works on your smartphone or your tablet or your laptop, or you can access that information anywhere you go as long as you have internet. So if you do have an oh shoot moment, you can log on and see what's going on. Also, we have put together a special PACE package that includes a discount that goes through the end of June. I uh, remember June is our 25th birthday and we're celebrating in a big way. 
Um, and this PACE package that we put together, it makes it a no-brainer price-wise for you. And I just looked at the clock. I realized that I would love to tell you more about Advantage Anywhere and what we do and how you work and what we can do to help you, but I've run out of time. So if you'd like to talk to me, send me a chat, reach out to me, whatever is most convenient for you. Um, I do have a thank you, is my way of saying thank you to you for attending today. Um, we are offering you two things. One is a free executive coaching session with myself or with Kristen, and also a video. It's called 37 Stats, Every Leader Must Know and Measure. It's Both of them are free as our gift to you. Uh, the video is really cute. You want to get that. It's a fun, toe-tapping music video. It's packed with eye-opening stats that you may not be aware of, and honestly, it may shock you a little bit. But once again, I want to thank you for tearing away from your responsibilities today to join me. I am so honored that you're here, and I would be super honored to meet you by phone or in person. So please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you. If you need anything or if you just want to brainstorm, we say that we're committed to your success, but we truly mean it. So I look forward to speaking with you personally. Until then, I wish you a fantastic day.